RISA Foundation utilizes a comprehensive set of modeling tools for the simple creation of a variety of foundation elements. Model foundation elements such as grade beams, retaining walls, spread and combined footings, piles, and mat slabs. In this video, we'll take a look at ways to apply loads within our RISA Foundation model. So let's go ahead and get started. Before I start applying loads, I'm going to first create my load combinations. We can access the load combination spreadsheet by clicking on the load combinations button at the top underneath the home tab or selecting load combinations underneath the data entry. Once the spreadsheet opens, you can see I've gone ahead and added in some load combinations already. You can add in additional load combinations simply by pressing enter on your keyboard. You can then go ahead and fill out the necessary information. Clicking on the first category option, you can select the ellipsis and see all of the different load categories available within RISA Foundation. If you have a category that doesn't already exist within RISA Foundation, you can go ahead and select the other loads option. Alternatively, and more efficiently, I can go ahead and use the load combination generator located at the top. Clicking on this button, I have the ability to go ahead and pick some load combinations to be generated per different regions, as well as the different codes for that specific region. I also have the ability to generate load combinations for wind loads, seismic loads, as well as over strength. Now that we have load combinations set up within our model, let's go ahead and apply some loads to our foundation elements. Underneath the home tab, we have three different loading options. We have a nodal load, a distributed load, as well as an area load. Let's first apply some nodal loads. Selecting this option, we will see in the properties that we can specify the different load categories that we saw earlier, as well as the direction, so Y being vertical, X being shear, Z also being shear, and then moments in the X, Y, and Z directions. Let's go ahead and apply some gravity dead load to our spread footings. Let's say it's going to be 100 kips. Now I have a couple of ways that I can apply this load. I can select the click to apply option, and then go through and select each individual footing and get the load applied. I can also box select the footings that I would like this load applied to, or I can go ahead and use the applied to selected option. Let's go ahead and use this option to apply some lateral loading. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and select my spread footings. So if I rotate my model a little bit, and I'm gonna go ahead and box select these footings, go back to my home and select the nodal load option, Let's change the category to our EQX. Now I want these loads in the X direction. And let's say the magnitude is going to be 10 kips. Since I've already selected these footings, I can simply say apply to selected. Notice all of the loads that have been applied to these spread footings are actually being applied to the top of the pedestal. This is important so that we are actually capturing the appropriate eccentricity due to these shears being offset from the centroid of our footing. Let's go ahead and take a look at our distributed loads. Adding these is very similar to point loads. However, you have two magnitudes that you can input. Notice that I can have a different starting versus ending magnitude. To apply this, I'm gonna select the click to apply and then navigate to somewhere in my mat slab and select two points where I want this distributed load located. Let's go ahead and take a look at the area loads now. To make this easier, I'm going to select my plan view and then select my area load option to start adding some area loads. Here, let's say we're going to do a uniform dead load of 20 PSF. I will now go through and click the different nodes that make up my mat. And once I've made it to the starting node, I will select it again to close out the area load creation. Rotating my model, we can see all the dead loads that are being applied. If I wanted to see the loads applied per different categories, I can select them here, or I can also see the loads as they're applied per load combination. Notice the magnitudes get adjusted based off of the factors for that selected load combination. If I've made a mistake, I can actually go ahead and select the individual loads and change their magnitudes. For example, let's say my area load I entered was incorrect, and it really needs to be 30 PSF. Alternatively, 
I can also change my loads using the spreadsheets. Perhaps the dead load for my spread footings is off by 10%. I can open up my nodal load spreadsheet, navigate to my dead loads, select the column that I would like to change, right click and say math to selected cells. Here I'm gonna go ahead and increase my loads by multiplying by 1.1 to account for that missing 10%. At this point, we finished modeling and applying our loads. We could then run the analysis and review the design results. For those topics and information on other topics, please visit our website, resa.com.